NTT Ballpark Cam taking us out to Globe Life Field, the home of the Texas Rangers, where there has been a lot of activity and a lot of change when it comes to the dugout as well as the front office. Emily Jones does a great job covering the Rangers on a daily basis for Bally Sports Southwest. And Emily joins us now as they get ready to take on the athletics in an afternoon contest. And I want to start, of course, with the dismissal of Chris Woodward, the manager for the Rangers M for the last four seasons. What what, in your opinion, was the biggest reason as to why? Well, the front office basically cited, you know, kind of some structures they wanted in place, some different styles they wanted in place. And I, I think it, Chris Woodward did a fantastic job with this team in his first three seasons, even into his fourth season. But uh, there were some differences in philosophies that they didn't feel like with this set of players, with this roster moving forward, that they needed a different voice. They needed a fresh voice within that clubhouse. Um, and, and, and they just felt like it was time to move on. They made the decision you know, with 48 games left in the season because they wanted to send a message to the clubhouse that they wanted certain things to change within the processes, within the structure. Um, and they felt like that it had gotten a little loose at times. And so they decided to send that message, make the move, and then, uh, I guess, readdress in the offseason. Emily, is Tony Beasley the man to reel in that clubhouse? I know that when I've talked to other folks that cover the Rangers that there's a lot of Ron Washington in Tony Beasley. Why does it make it the right choice for him to at least have that interim tag? Well, I think it was a no-brainer as far as the interim tag is concerned. Uh, Tony Beasley is highly, highly respected. Uh, he cares about his guys, and, and they care about him. Um, I, he has a, a high level of, of respect, uh, not only within our clubhouse, but across baseball. And I think that, you know, when you have a situation like this where you're changing midseason, that you want someone who is established within an organization uh, and a voice that, that guys respect. And I think Tony Beasley has that. Um, we, we actually asked asked Bees about that today, about the Ron Washington comparison. He said, I don't necessarily have the effervescence that Ron Washington has. Uh, you can take take that for what you will. Maybe he doesn't use the colorful language that Ron Washington uses, but uh, definitely that, that, that mutual care and respect between player and manager is absolutely there. Yeah, and I don't see Bees doing yoga on the field uh, before batting practice either like <laughs> Ron Washington used to do. It wasn't the only change, though, Emily, a big change in the front office. President of Baseball Operations John Daniels was let go after 21 seasons with the Rangers organization. Can you take me through that timeline, please? Was it a directive from Chris Young for John Daniels to let Chris Woodward go, or did John Daniels know that his dismissal was coming as well? John Daniels did not know his dismissal was coming. I, I, to be quite frank with you, I think this was the plan all along, and J.D. was on board with it. I just don't think the timing was what he thought it would be. But when Chris Young was brought in, it was of the idea that he would ultimately uh, take the reins and take over this and John Daniels would step away. He had already begun that process. The timing was the only thing that was up in the air and the only thing that was, I guess you could call strange about this. But the, the ownership group said that they really wanted Chris Young to be able to get a head start on not only, you know, kind of filling out his staff, but getting to those off-season duties of uh, finding a manager, uh, thinking about free agent acquisitions, all those things uh, that, a, that a general manager and president of baseball operations is charged with and so that's why they made the move when they did like I said this was the plan all along the timing of it was just what was a little different than expected and Emily I know you have a great relationship with John Daniels in fact uh, he's one of the youngest uh, to have that type of position only Billy Bean and, and Brian Cashman have longer tenures with an organization and it's not as if JD didn't have some success when he was there of course the Rangers had four American League West titles five playoff appearances you guys won the AL championship in 2010 and 11 where do you think John Daniels goes from here. You know, I don't know. I, I know that he was wanting to start, you know, taking some steps back from his involvement uh, with the organization and with the game, quite frankly, because he wanted to spend more time with his family, with his children, um, with his wife, Robin. And uh, so I think he's going to take this time to really uh, 
take everything in, spend that quality time with his family. Um, he, he joked with me yesterday that his wife Robin applied for a part-time job so she wouldn't have to be in the house with him all day long. Um, I don't think he was serious, but I think he's just going to kind of soak it all in, uh, weigh his options, see what's out there. He's obviously a brilliant baseball mind. Uh, he is extremely well respected across baseball. I, I can't say enough about the way he carried himself when things were good, when things were bad. He was the same guy all the time, and um, I have no doubt that he will be coveted by uh, other organizations, both inside and outside of baseball. Uh, his professionalism and his availability is above reproach. Final question, Emily, for you. This is a team that hasn't had a lot of success building homegrown talent. They spent half a billion dollars on the middle of the infield, but they haven't really had any pitching prospects to speak of other than C.J. Wilson, I believe, many years ago. I want to ask you this, though. Where does CY go from here in terms of bu building that talent? You guys signed Kumar Rocker. You signed uh, Leiter. What's your take on that and how they have to build a better farm system? Yeah, and I think that's the biggest issue. And I think that was the biggest issue with John Daniels was the lack of player development. Um, the drafts have been a bit hit or miss uh, over the last decade or so. I think you've seen in the last couple of seasons that they have really put together some legitimate drafts. When you talk about Josh Young, who is banging on the door of the big leagues, you mentioned Kumar Rocker and Jack Leiter. I think those are all steps in the right direction. But now it's a matter of developing those players. And quite frankly, this organization has not done a good job of developing home grown talent so that will be Chris Young's biggest challenge and his I would assume top priority. All right Joey Gallo one of the only impact players to come out of the organization in recent years now of course with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Emily Jones thank you as always for your insight we appreciate it. Thanks Alana.